Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing uh, some tutorials on the Rhino display settings. Uh, this has nothing to do with Grasshopper whatsoever, uh, but this is, this is some good, good stuff uh, that will be pretty critical to uh, bumping up the representational quality of all the work you do for the course. Uh, so rejoice, give thanks, you guys have Rhino 6, which has uh, some really advanced display settings uh, compared to earlier versions, uh, Rhino 4 and 5. Uh, one day people will watch this tutorial and say, oh my god, how did you ever survive with the archaic display settings available in Rhino 6, but today they are awesome. Uh, so the first thing we're going to work on is this Arctic view. Um, and before we even start changing the view settings. You know, some of you are going to be pretty new to Rhino, um, and I want to go over some fundamentals. Uh, so the first thing is the, uh, when you're in perspective view, so you have over here, um, you can set your view top, bottom, etc., etc. Uh, you also have perspective top, front, over here. Uh, so in Rhino 6, if you want to change the lens length, you can do that right here. And so if you want to do like a Zaha Hadid kind of like cranked view, this is not something that we do too often in this course, but if it's relevant for your project, um, this will give you that really like stretched out perspective view. Uh, if you put it at 100, this is closer to an isometric view. Uh, and I think 50 is sort of the, the default uh, perspective. You can also, and this is something that we use much more often in this class, uh, uh, the isometric view, uh, which is not quite an axon for reasons that uh, we don't need to get into, but, uh, but it's pretty close. It does a lot of the same things. Uh, it's a, a parallel projection. Uh, and so, so there's, not, there's not a sense of perspective here. So if you're looking at a large scale, uh, like urban project, uh, the buildings in the back will appear as big as the buildings at the front, uh, which is great for a sort of analytical axon. Uh, so once you've set up the view that you like, uh, not crazy about that line, but we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, you can go over here to named views. If you don't have this little tab, go under panels, named views, and you can save that view as parallel. Uh, and so now if you're modeling, you're moving things around, you want to get back to that view, you have it. And anytime you animate out um, or, or take screenshots or anytime you need to make an image, you always have the exact same view. Uh, you just want to make sure that you also have uh, the same uh, dimensions in your viewport. And you can change that by popping out your screen and you can just change this and you'll see how the, uh, the width goes down. So if you want to get it to 800, you just gotta you know, get that until you have the proportions you want. Okay, uh, so that covers perspective versus isometric uh, and named views. So now we're gonna get into uh, duplicating views. So under options, uh, you come down here to view and if you click on display mode, this will tell you all of the display modes that are available. Uh, now I've already made uh, the ones that we're gonna use today, but the way you would start, you choose Arctic and make a copy. Uh, and then you can change the name here. We'll call it, uh, is it Arctic? Yes, too many C's in that word. Uh, Arctic, we'll call this tutorial. Okay, uh, so you save that and make sure you switch this guy to uh, your view. And it looks exactly the same because we haven't changed anything. Uh, so first things first, uh, I really like ha being able to see the edges, the lines uh, in, in this view. So we are gonna come down to, where is it, surface edge thickness. Ah, so <laughs> yes, we want to be, you have to 
make sure you're in the view that you're trying to to update uh, so here surface edge thickness this is set to zero so if you bump that to one now you have edges on everything uh, there's also this color reduction uh, arctic view by default uh, puts everything at the same color uh, oof. apologies uh, Arctic view puts everything at the same color, uh, but I actually want to use the layer colors uh, that I've specified. So, hmm, uh, that didn't quite do what I expected it to, uh, but that's all right. We'll we'll come back to that. Uh, da, 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 da. So next we can. Oh, I think that's under shading settings. Let's see here. Yeah, so here, if we choose under shading settings, if we choose objects color, there you go. That's what gets us the colors that we've specified. Now, this is a little annoying because if you have this at zero, oh, this is just the edges. Okay, that makes sense. So here, with, with that at zero, you've got green edges here and kind of gray edges and then black edges. Rhino, for whatever reason, a black material, a pure black material, will display as white. Uh, but if it's got any gray in it whatsoever, it'll be much darker. Don't know why. Uh, but if you put that color reduction at 100%, then all of your edges will be black, which is nice. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, so the ambient occlusion color, this is, this is sort of a small thing. Uh, but right now, uh, this, this shading, you have a lot of options uh, for how you want to manage that shading. You can play around with those. I like ambient occlusion the most. But you can also, uh, if we put a little bit of blue in it, maybe we need a little bit more. So you just get a nicer... I'll show you, I'll do an extreme example here. So you see the there's a little bit of blue now in the shadows, which, which I like. I think that looks quite nice. Uh, and then one other option. Uh, actually, there's a couple more I want to do here. So the ground plane here under viewport settings, ground plane settings, you can turn that off. Now, depending on how you have your view set up, um, the ground plane settings are nice. Uh, if it's something like this, it's nice to have that little bit of, of shadow. What drives me crazy is this line in the back. So there's a couple different ways that we can deal with that. I think one would be to make an enormous plane and we have to move this down a little bit to get it underneath that guy. Okay, so now I can't see that line in the background because I've made this giant object uh, which sits in the background. So that's one way to deal with it. That's probably what I would recommend. Um, but the other option is you can just turn that off entirely. Uh, There, that's actually, yeah, so now, now we've sort of lost the shadow. That was, that was nice at the edge there. Uh, so draw a plane, that sort of solves all your problems. <laughs> I guess the, the moral of the story is don't really worry about the ground plane settings, just draw a, a plane. Um, the other option, uh, so once you have that plane, you can effectively play with uh, the background color just by changing that plane. But you can also, if doo -doo 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 -doo, if you want to change the background color so that it's not white, uh, that can be a nice way of getting your model to pop a little bit more. Uh, so we can do something like this, you're really not going to need much at all. 
uh, even that. That's going to make quite a difference in terms of how your model um, is visible. The challenge with that, I, I happen to really like uh, animations and drawings, at, at least in this class, for the type of representation that's required uh, or that seems to come out of uh, this workflow. Uh, I like to have drawings that kind of float in space uh, so that you can compare you know, one next to the other. Uh, and I find that having a white background tends to be the easiest for those types of drawings, but if you want to, to put a background color, uh, by all means, go ahead and, and do it and experiment. That's how you would, you would do that. Uh, so this is our, our modified Arctic view settings. Uh, I think those look pretty good. The next thing we're going to change is pen. Uh, pen is great because it gives you uh, this nice silhouette line. Uh, so you can see the edge line is twice as thick as the interior line. Uh, but for some reason, they insist on absolutely ruining this view setting with this paper background that's just atrocious. Uh, and what we want this to look like um, is something more more like this, where you have the nice silhouette line, but you still have a little bit of shading. <coughs> Excuse me, um, and you you've got your your colors. So we're going to use um, some settings very similar to what we just did for Arctic View. Um, so if you go to Pen and you make a copy, you will call it Pen tutorial, click OK, and let's just jump over, uh, here we are, pen tutorial, OK, so it's terrible, but the good news is we can fix the most egregious problem uh, pretty quickly, again, make sure under display modes that you are in the correct one, uh, so the background here is this image file. It could be any image, uh, and actually you could have a lot of fun uh, creating your own raster backgrounds, uh, but for right now, we are just going to kill that immediately. Uh, and right away, that looks so much better. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is add a little bit of shadow. Um, so under I think it's under scene lighting here. I'm going to switch that to ambient occlusion. How does that look? I think we also... I think we need to shade the objects as well. Okay, so now we've shaded the objects here. That had to be clicked. And we have a scene lighting. Uh, but the shadow is is much, much, much too dark because uh, now it looks like shaded view. Uh, and we just want a little bit of shadow. A little bit more. Okay, yeah, that's nice. We just, just a little bit, just to give it uh, some difference between the, uh, the faces. Uh, and... I think by default in pen settings, you have the, the object colors um, are displayed, so that's nice. Uh, but the way, yeah, the way you would change that would be here. Uh, so you could make single color for all objects, and you could make that white, and then all your objects would be white. Uh, but I like, I like having the objects color like so. Uh, Ah, so let's do a couple things. Uh, for one, you can turn on hidden lines, uh, which if you have a simple drawing can can be nice. It drives me crazy that I, I have not found a way to change that to a, a solid line. Uh, if you use make 2D, you, know, you can have your hidden lines and you can have quite a bit of control over the line type. I think this, this sort of dot line is much too busy. Uh, so I'm not a big fan 
but that's that's how you would play around with it. Uh, this double thick outline is called a silhouette. Uh, so if you turn that off, then all of your lines will have the same thickness. Uh, silhouette lines, unfortunately, there, there's kind of some some maddening things that uh, McNeil has left out. Uh, one of the biggest ones is that you don't have this option for silhouette lines in all of the views. You only have them in the what they call technical views. Uh, so in like rendered or Arctic, uh, you don't have that option. And why they wouldn't just give you that control is beyond me. It's really frustrating, but they don't. Uh, but we can change uh, some of those line qualities by going down here under uh, our, our setting, our display setting, we can go to objects. We actually need to open that up and we can look at lines. And so what we can do here is we can further differentiate our edge color from our silhouette. So we can make this a gray. And now we'll have this lighter tone here. We can make that even lighter if we want. And so now you get a really big difference between the silhouette. And of course, you could also, I wouldn't recommend this, but you could bump your silhouette up to even thicker lines. Uh, now, one time when you would want to bump these up a little bit, uh, if I am going to uh, render out an animation, if I'm going to use these dimensions, 975 by 410, that's great. Uh, my images will look exactly as they do here. But if I wanted a higher resolution uh, image, if I wanted to double this, so what would that be like 1950 by 820, which is still not a huge image. Uh, it's probably a good idea if this was a really important animation uh, that was going to be full screen in my presentation, I would definitely uh, bump that up. But what's going to happen is the line weights are defined as being two pixels uh, for the silhouette and one pixel for the edge. So what happens is if I double the size of my drawing, there's still going to be two pixels, but effectively they're going to look uh, half as thick because my image will be twice as big. Uh, so what I would do is make a new version of pen settings and I would double my line weights and that would allow them to look the same. Uh, conversely, if I wanted really light lines, one pixel is the minimum setting, but if I were to double the size of the image, they would effectively be like half a pixel. Uh, so that would be one way to get even thinner uh, lines uh, if, if you wanted them. Uh, and so again, that's just when you're, when you're either you're animating out in Grasshopper or if you do, there's this view capture, uh, but that will just use the, the sort of default image size. So this is grayed out. Uh, oh, I guess Rhino 6. Oh, Rhino 6, you can just do it here. Oh, that's nice. Uh, so this is a new feature. This is a little bit different than how it works in Rhino 5. Uh, but you can see here, if I, if I double the scale, it's going to uh, increase the size to 1950 by 820. Uh, and that's, that's how you would do that. Uh, okay, lastly, or, or not quite lastly, uh, so I'm going to show you something in Rhino 5. I have this option to, this is just some context in the background. You can grab all of that guy there, select objects. And there's a command called set object display mode. And so what I've done here is I've created this uh, pen no silhouette uh, view mode. And what that is, it's, it's exactly the same uh, setting that the main model is in, but there's no silhouette line. And that helps if you have a big urban context uh, and you want to differentiate it from your building. Uh, having that nice, uh, heavy silhouette line and maybe some darker shadows uh, is a great way to, to do that uh, so that you can, you know, your model will really pop out. The problem is in Rhino 6, it doesn't really seem to work. <laughs> and, and I don't know why, and I apologize uh, that I'm not able to sort of showing you something without being 100% sure how you would do it. Um, but when you pick these guys, you set object display mode, 
Rhino 6 seems to do two things. For one, it limits the options I have here. Uh, and for two, even if I choose uh, something really different, like if I choose uh, shaded, it'll be a little bit different, but it's not quite the shaded view mode because you can still see I've got these silhouette lines. And if I switch the whole, this is what shaded mode should look like. Uh, but for some reason, if I'm in my pen mode, my background guys are still, they're kind of using the pen display mode now, but they're kind of using the shaded mode. It's a really weird in between. Um, so basically, if you're using Rhino 6, you either need to figure this out on your own or, or don't bother. <laughs> Just uh, use the main display mode and come up with a, a single display mode that works for your entire image. Um, you could probably best do that with like coloring your your objects. So your primary buildings could get like a little bit of, of gray or something so that they pop out. Or maybe we do more of like a color rather than a gray, something. Something that helps them pop out and maybe your context buildings uh, could get that that uglier gray. Uh, I don't know. You, you'd have to play with it. But uh, okay, so last thing, let's say you have pen settings uh, and you want to share them with the rest of your team. Uh, under display modes here, you can pick, uh, let's take this one pen tutorial that we just made, and you can export it. Uh, and so we'll just put this uh, down here. So this is a, a .ini file. And boom, 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 and you're done. And then you could just as easily, uh, in your new file, oops, options in the same area here, you, you could import it, and you'll see it right here. And you can bring that, that view mode into your new file. Uh, similarly, you can import named views, just the same. Uh, you can save them. Uh, oh, well, saving them just saves them in this file. Uh, but if you want to import from another 3D view, uh, I don't even, this is a project I've been working on, uh, but this just pulled in the views from, from that project, which won't make any sense in this project, but <laughs> just to show you how to do that. Uh, okay, I think that's it for display modes. Uh, see you at the next tutorial.